I get really frustrated when I go to thrift stores in other parts of the country and they have none of this because you know it's being donated. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique mall shops and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Hey everybody, I'm George the Antique Nomad. I don't do as many thrifting videos as a lot of folks on YouTube because I am traveling a lot and a lot of places that I go to thrift stores just don't really have a lot. But I was able to go with a friend of mine and find some really cool stuff. We went to four different thrift stores and I can't wait to show you what we found. We are at the ARC Thrift Store. How nice to have a thrift store that has a view like this. Art thrift stores are a big fixture in Colorado. They have a number of them and they usually have good stuff and the prices are cheap. I've got a friend who buys these and she takes them to every show and then sells them for 20 or 25 bucks to the people at the big outdoor shows. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, she does a state sale so she just collects them all year and then everybody who gets there and forgets their cart buys one, it's funny. So Rally Roots was in here a month ago. Well, by since then I'm sure they've restocked. Hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be real empty. But I have a feeling it's not. It looks pretty full to me. This would be a good motto for me. I do tend to hurry through things. These are Holly Hobby plates from the early 70s. Some people collect Holly Hobby and remember it. Some people still collect Joseph figurines and remember them too. This one is September with her little rhinestones, but she has the black eyes, so she has some age and she's only $1.29. Well, that's gonna go with me. Yeah, it's Mount Rushmore with different people and I'm not sure who Wilson is, the artist, and I'm not recognizing the people. It doesn't look like other political folks, so. I wanna make sure we don't miss something, although this is huge. I don't know which one. $24.99, I mean, it's strange and interesting. It might be something, we'll have to look into it. Fostoria American, they always seem to have a few pieces of that at the Ark. My cousin used to live in Denver and he found some great stuff at the Ark up there. They really are a good chain and it's nice that the proceeds stay locally. Here's the center of a Lazy Susan from California, but no other pieces unless we find them as we go around, which sometimes happens at thrift stores. Don't give up. Sometimes if you see a piece in one place, you'll see another mismatch piece in another place. Uh, and the bags. A lot of thrift stores do put a lot of things in bags and it can be very random and if you can find one thing that's worthwhile, for example, there's a Fenton Hobnail Cruet or two in this one, but they're missing their stoppers so I wouldn't buy them, but they're only $1.99 for the two of them. If you have the stoppers, there's a deal. It's always worth a look and yeah, if you were pulling Lucite candles out of bags here, I would look every time I came. My last glasses baby came from Right it's funny how once you find something in a place you just keep going back because you're sure you're going to find something again and sometimes that happens. Sometimes there's just a magic spot for you and your place that you go all the time. Now these are Athern. These were a little bit better HO trains and these kits have not been made up yet. They're asking seven dollars a piece. There's probably some room in that. I don't sell them for enough more to want to go ahead and get them at that price. But somebody who does more railroad stuff probably should buy those at these prices. Oh yeah, oh, those are cool. It's a composite type thing. Yeah, they're kind of. It almost feels like fiberglass. Yeah, I think they're cool. That's cool. Well, we each have something in the cart, so see, we're already off to a good start. So lots of housewares at this place. They do turn out a lot of merchandise at this place. Now this would have been a flora space originally, but it is Anchor Hawking Royal Ruby. And this is going to date to about 1950. It's $6.99. That's actually a pretty good price. It's got that very true red in it. Let's look in the art bin because you just never know. Somebody took a Washington State Ferry and bought a limited edition watercolor print which is now $12.99. I don't recognize this artist as an important Northwest artist, but it's cute because she was smart and brought the black light. We're gonna see if this Fenton satin vase by any chance might fluoresce. Okay, so first of all, no. Okay, doesn't glow under black light, but she's got this great three-in-one device. So it's- so, so did on mine. So you get, look how bright that is to check for crap. Oh, that's really nice actually. Yeah, when you get into a dark space like an attic or a estate sale where it's dark. Oh, very cool. 10 bucks on eBay. Really? I showed it on my video. 
video and a lot of people said, oh, I want one. So wow, this is really awesome, you guys. Thank you. That's actually really good to know. I need to get one. Yvonne picked this up, and this is something I hadn't paid attention to before. And they were by Avon. It's 1983, so it is 40 years old. And she's got a customer for Avon Critters, so now we know. Now this is a treasure craft piece. The Southwest line was very popular in the 80s and early 90s when Southwest style was very popular. But you'll notice it says Japan on the bottom. When Treasure Craft suddenly was the last major California pottery company, they got so many orders they couldn't keep up on everything. And so they did the plates in California, but they had some of the pieces made in Japan for a while to keep up with the demand. This is actually 1930s. It's a go along with Manhattan glass. And so I've always liked it for that reason. It's only $6. They should sell for about 20 these days. This one, however, was left somewhere where it has a water stain in it. And I don't know if that'll come out. They certainly have a lot of stuff in this store. And that's why it's fun, because you always have a chance to get something. I mean, we've already found three or four items. Here is the furniture section. And we see sort of the usual suspects. Simulated wood grain. A lot of traditional styles that are not really big in the marketplace right now. I don't see anything really vintage that's the type of thing I look for. And then as soon as I say that, here marked down now to $83, and I think it's half off today, so it'd be $40 for this 1920 sideboard. Now you have to need it because it takes up a lot of space, but it's got lots of good storage. Some people are even using these as dressers and putting their folding clothes in them. So they do serve more than one purpose. It's got this heavy carved baluster that you see in the 1920s for the legs. It's in really good shape, actually. That seems like a pretty phenomenal deal. And while I'm not a big fan of painting things out, if you were going to paint something, look at all the design you could do. You could paint the recessed areas and have them go back so that the flowers came out in bigger dimension and you could just really have a lot of fun with this piece and best of all it's solid wood not veneer and who would have thought that these metal file drawers would eventually be of interest to people again when people started putting everything on computer and getting away from index cards well you really didn't see a lot of demand for these but now people are finding other ways to use them and that's why for $20 for the pair, they're really worth buying for resale. And since Yvonne appreciates 70s design like I do, Xenomorph said you should ask her if she has or you can find any of those glass lamps from the 70s. So funny, as I was telling Yvonne, there's no furniture that I would like. Suddenly I see these Lane Laminates pieces. Now they need pretty heavy restoration, so you would have to go and sand this down and redo it. These are right out of the 1960s. And you see this one here on the top, they're $25 each. Oh, thank you. And yes, it obviously needs some reviving, but if you were willing to do the work, these sell for about $125 to $150 a piece in some markets now. I see a hooked rug here, but this looks like more recent material. Yeah, there's a lot of polyester in that one. If you find the cotton ones, they do sell. Video games. I know enough to look for things that have not been used. I know the sports ones reasonably well, and most of the sports ones are not huge money for the most part. Other than that, I just have a sketch knowledge of these sorts of things. So if you folks are seeing something wonderful that I should have been buying, please tell me. I'd like to learn. Cuckoo clocks scare me because they so infrequently run well. But when they do, they sell for $75 or $100 or more. Yvonne just pointed to the precious moments and said no, and she's right, unless you have the original or the nativity set or some of the large pieces, these little ones, they just made too many all at once. So the market is glutted. These are priced between $12 and $15. And even though it's not terribly old, we probably better look at this Pooh and Eeyore figure because some of these ceramic ones made at limited editions you can only get at the park sell for $30 and $40, and this one's priced at $8.99. Okay, this is part of the Pooh and Friends line, so this one is not one of the ones from the theme parks. Well, I don't blame you for taking a peek, because after the viewer that we met in the first source, Sandra, said that she got a piece of 18 karat gold out of one of these bags. That definitely made me think that we might be wanting to look at those things. I'm looking for a little earlier vintage, but sometimes you find it in here. It's just nice that they have jewelry, you know. Not every thrift store is putting aside 
all of the easy to sell stuff for themselves, which is great to see. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes people put stuff back because it was too expensive for them that's actually pretty good. Gay plastics, this is out of the 70s and they don't really sell for a lot, but this one's only $1.99. People remember them, but they were cheap when they were new, and cheap stays cheap a lot of times. Now this has an old barrel clasp. It looks like spun plastic or paper. Kind of a fun look for $1.99. It's certainly long enough, and it's knotted well, and it does have some vintage. But I'm supposed to come into a lot of jewelry, so I'm going to be selective. I don't think this is new new. It's probably 80s because of the way that this base tucks in just a little bit. That was a style then. And fake stained glass was a style then too. A lot of the soda companies did. So it's probably worth the $1.49. And I've got people in my group who specifically like Dr. Pepper stuff. So you might be onto something there. Oh, they killed it at this door. Yeah, we did all right. Or I, <laughs> hey, I, know I was being sarcastic. Hey, you know what we though? We killed it. <laughs> hey, I got one item in four thrift stores in Boise, so believe me, this seems like we are just rolling in it as far as I'm concerned. Well, this guy was courtesy of someone who was shopping next to us who saw us talking about plush and that we knew some things and not others. I should be careful of his poor little head. But he is made for Mercedes-Benz and says so on the bottom by Harrington. And because of that, she said, oh, it could be $25, it could be a few hundred dollars, you should buy this. So Yvonne is getting the Mercedes bear and we're going to see how it does. One really nice thing about doing this and filming is that people actually do go out of your way. This is the second store we've been in and the second time someone has gone out of their way to talk to us about what we do. And they both had good suggestions and helped us buy things that we could sell for a profit. So we're very grateful for that. This is what's so great about this community, whether it's real world or it's online or through YouTube or however you get to your vintage community, people are really willing to help. And we all come out well in the end. So our third stop is Life Network Family Thrift Store. I have not been to this one before and I'm excited to see someplace new. Yvonne said that we might find something and we might not, but if we find it, it'll probably be really cheap. And that sounds great. I'll have silver and gold, but it'll be... Price like silver and gold. Well, that's smart of them, actually. They should have a jewelry person, but I see some things right here that are kind of cool. Yeah, but sometimes I get lucky. I, I buy a lot of jewelry out of here. I mean, this looks like an old Judy Lee piece. And it's only $3.99. They were home party jewelry. And so, you know, you see pop rivets and things that's not as high quality as some of the stuff made. But that's a lot of look and a good color for that price. This one is Sarah Coventry. This one I already have. So I'll tell you what, if you can use that for $3.99. Not, not my jam, but not your jam. I argue about the Ooh, the Margasites. Oh, that's cool. Like well, that's yours. Swan collection. But I want you to have first. Oh, no, that's very kind of you. Yeah. But no, trust me, I'm getting plenty. If you saw how full my car is, you wouldn't worry at all. It's, it's old, not wedding right? cake, but they are older because it's got yeah. that barrel clasp from about 1960. These are definitely Italian, yeah. and Murphy, yeah, Murphy that's and that's that's a buy. You should definitely you take you, that. You take first nope, dibs. If nope, you nope, that's yours. You, you saw it first. No, that looks like it's a listener piece. Just a basic silver tone, but kind of a nice design. This one's a shinier finish on the back, so it's newer, but it does have a nice look with the tassel. And it has earrings, but this is not an old set. Oh, these are glove holders from back in the day when women wore gloves. Yeah, they'd put this around their uh, finger or wrist and then the gloves would dangle off. Um, you know, I love them, but there's not that many collectors, just the people who are really serious about gloves. So I've never sold it, so just for the heck of it. I think they're fun. Oh, cool. That is cute. I like the little spring pastels. FEMA clay, that's cute. Let's see what else you got. So you're giving me that I'm, 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 no, it's okay. Okay, I like it, but it's a nice Judy Lee and you'll sell it well. And like I said, I'm coming into some jewelry. Oh, this is nice. I like that. That's a great face. And Marcusites, very, collection. very cool. Oh, you keep the Marcusites. Uh, the swan, my swan. Oh, the swans, okay. Swan Christmas. This is also probably by Judy Lee. And oh, that's cute. Fun. And then this is a great deal. Super deal. That's that's really I cool. I want you to take that. You're going to take that. Nah. Yeah, because you gave me that. We fight over what the Each other one has to buy isn't that great <laughs> most people can't <laughs> yeah most people can't shop together we have the opposite problem it's funny you're like a friend of mine and i when we go shopping together we just make a pile and then we divvy it up at the end it's like one for you one for me 
That's what Becky and I do. We share. Now, see how this place already has a whole bunch of vintage and collectible things, and we've just barely gotten in the door. And this is why I get really frustrated when I go to thrift stores in other parts of the country and they have none of this, because you know it's being donated. You know it came in the door. So where did it go? This is an old Heise Greek key that Yvonne just picked up. This is from about 1910. One of the first things they did was the Greek key pattern. It was very popular back then. And this one does have the diamond H in the bottom. That is the high Z mark. Also look at this foot because a lot of times that diamond H would plug up with glass and is not visible. So I've heard people often say, oh, it's not high Z if it doesn't have the diamond H. That is not true. Also look how worn this is on the bottom. It's in great shape. They took good care of it, but they use this a lot. And you can tell when you see something that has almost no wear and it's a hundred years old or more like this, Mm, I'd be very suspicious. Cute little cabinet vase here with the majolica top and the hand painting. And when we take it out, we see there's an airbrush quality to the painting of the flowers. It's marked Czechoslovakia. So it's actually from about 1920. And it's $10, really a very good price for what it is. Gold and silver in here, but again, oh, yes. they have a jeweler come in. Right. Once in a while, one of the trays will be half price. He'll come in and move all the stuff into a half price. Oh, there. I see. Yeah, I see. They've got a 14 karat gold bracelet, four grams for 155. So the prices aren't unfair. And if they did go on sale, it would be worth buying. Yeah. They're smart to have a jeweler come yeah. in, though, if they're getting this much jewelry. Yeah, they get a lot of jewelry, don't they? They do, actually, yeah. Well, it makes me think that all of them do and that they just don't put it out. Here is a Halloween Afghan for $4.99. What do you think of that? Only $4.99? Only $4.99. That might be you. Oh, it's brown. That's Charlie Brown. Oh, it's Charlie Brown, not Halloween. <laughs> Well, you know, for Halloween, that's a good price. It's not the best quality yarn, but I don't know. This is a vintage looking print, but there's a lot of this around now that is new, including this piece here. It used to be easy. We'd just see the vintage prints and go right to them. But now, well, a lot of retro design has come along, so we have to pick through a little more carefully and know our labels. I'm going to head back to the furniture, which looks like it's mostly new. And I like these wire art pieces, but these are new as well. You know, whenever something comes back, actually this is string art rather than wire art. You can see it's threads. $80 by uttermost.com. You know, whenever something cool from olden days comes back into fashion, there's always the danger of new reproductions. And so you've got to look at your new pieces to know what the old ones are and how they're different. It was very popular in the late 40s and early 50s to hammer copper into designs and some commercial companies did it as well. You see the elders in the van there and lip is the signature. Somebody framed this up so this is probably done by someone in the family and then they framed it at a later date. Yeah it's a good color too and it looks like a 70s or 80s color. Definitely Mexican glass with all those bubbles. They're not controlled in any way. They would just throw something in there. Blanco threw potatoes in to make the seed bubbles. I'm not sure what they used in Mexico. Maybe an avocado back when those weren't expensive. Here's bluebirds. Now the bluebirds were very popular in the early 1900s. Let's see if this is an old piece. It does look like it with the concentric rings. Probably a European blank painted on this fish. <laughs> Okay, that's really scary. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it, so you talk about it. Oh, I don't know what to say about it either, other than it is not swimming home with me. This guy, I think, is a little more interesting, personally, for the price of $4.99, all made of wood. This looks like a Turvis tumbler, which you know about Turvis, right? Nope. Oh. Definitely look for Turvis when you see this plastic. It's made in Sarasota, Florida, and they tend to do specialty things. It's double lined, so it's kind of like a Yeti. It doesn't sweat. But depending on what the logo is, some of them can be money now. It, but it, it is missing the lid, though. I should... No, this one actually was probably just done as a tumbler. Okay. They did both. Okay. So, yeah, but uh, take a moment to study those. I think you'll find them around here and you'll make money on them. Good. I have donated tools at the end of estate sales. This is a very fresh, fairly clean brand new Delta table saw for $79.99, which is half of what you would pay for a 
poor quality one at Harbor Freight. So great deal. Now, if I were in the area here and I sold on Facebook Marketplace or some other online, you come and pick it up, well, that would actually be a great thing to take home and make $80 on. And the reason I mention this is a lot of times I think we think so much about shipping things that we're reluctant to get large items, but there are lots of ways to sell large items that don't involve shipping. And some people like Kat at the Nurse Flipper just go ahead and put it in a box anyway. This is a QWERTY typewriter, but it is missing one key, which is too bad because otherwise for $49.99, that's a nice attractive looking Royal Quiet Deluxe in its case from about 1950. Little painted toll piece music in this place, Edelweiss, made in Switzerland, only $1.99. I see some dolls. She said she got a very good doll here not too long ago. These all seem to be more recent vintage today. Well, while she's checking out, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like and comment. Please let us know you're out there. And if you'd like to be notified of future videos, all you have to do is subscribe and then click that bell to be notified. It costs nothing to subscribe. If you want to make contributions for the channel, you can do so by taking a membership. And we have three different levels and they have different benefits that you can check out by clicking that join button or going to memberships in the description and clicking the link. It's so nice to actually be excited about going to Goodwill. There's another one right behind us. Yvonne says this is one of the best ones in the area. And I'll tell you, we found more items at the first Goodwill store today than I have found in the last 10 attempts at Goodwills in other parts of the country. So I am convinced Colorado is the place to thrift. And I'm not alone. Interesting thing is that all the thrift stores are having their parking lots repaved today. Yvonne's going in and I'm gonna chase after her somewhere. She and I are both tall, so we look at rounders first. She's got a nice piece of hand-blown glass with a rose there. I like this piece, this looks metal made in India. It's looking like a Swedish piece from the 50s, but it's not. These figures are kind of interesting with the... It's like some sort of a paper mache that's wrapped. And I see these around their folk art. They were very popular in the 80s and 90s. These are priced at about $4 each. I keep thinking this is something that people are going to start collecting, and I'll bet someone does somewhere already. This Goodwill color codes the end caps. And I have to tell you, when I see that in a Goodwill, they're usually the better Goodwills, the ones that make that extra effort. So this looks old, but it's got a chip. Oh yeah, Moonstone Opalescent. That's George looking at them now, you guys. Four dollars each. Yeah, I mean they're cute. They're worth a little more, but not enough to make money on, I don't think. Here is a fun giraffe with an unfun broken leg. That's too bad because this was a fun piece made in Florida, probably in the 1950s or 60s, I'd say 60s, looking at the flower power design there. That would have been a lot of fun to take back, but damaged, I can't do it. One of these pie servers shaped like a pie. A bunch of companies, including Treasure Craft, made these in the 1980s. That one also has a chip. Fun lavender color to that Lazy Susan, but it doesn't have the spinner. This is early 2000s. You see a lot of these tiles done as bread warmers about that time because everyone was getting bread machines in the 90s and early 2000s. Now all those people are getting rid of the bread machines because a lot of them are at the point where they're not supposed to eat a lot of bread. Heartland Studios, Geneva, New York. That's cool, it's different. It is a cool looking thing and it's got a music box in the bottom, but I think you should have this because I don't need it and because it needs to have that set in with a uh, little nail which will be about a two minute job that I know I will never do. Okay. So that goes to you. All right. I'll take it and fix it. It's pretty cool. It is cool. It's definitely worth doing. Is You'll make like money on that. Or something? It might be. I like the brass. It does look European to me. This is the shelf where last time I found a pair of Lucite curtain tie backs actually and I sold them for about $50. So maybe we'll find something like that here now. Let's flip the camera and see. Well, today we have a lot of cup and saucer sets. A lot of this violet done by Norcrest in the 50s and 60s. Interesting, so another Raku piece, and see how this isn't heavy in the bronze glazes that I usually think of Raku, but you can tell by the firing on the bottom that it is. And 
Yvonne has been dealing in this stuff long enough that she said, you know, they're decent pieces, but these look like somebody who is learning the craft rather than an advanced studio. Well, we're over on the art wall here. I don't see anything that jumps out at me. We'll try down this aisle. Piece of false graph, the casserole for $10. I'm looking for vintage and, you know, like most thrift stores, vintage to me is 30 years old. Well, a lot of things more recent than 30 years old are what a lot of thrift stores get as donations. But they do get older pieces here as well. This one is a, an interesting shape. This is W.S. George. And it says, a half century of fine dinnerware, 1904 to 1954, so no mistaking when that's from. This would have been a little out of style by 1954. This is more of a 1930s effect with the squarishness and the ruffled edge and the flower transfer. These have a date of 1956, so I'm guessing it's some bank or other institution. First National Bank, 1874, 1890, and 1956, how modern. Sometimes these commemorative glasses do well. This is not a set I think will do much for me, unfortunately. Starting to see some demand for these pieces with the margoline. And then, of course, the cornflower blue is selling well. They have this priced at $5.99 for the large low casserole. I had someone say recently, oh, but those things are so common, you see them all over the place. Well, cornflower blue is a great example of something that is very common and very collectible because so many people know what it is and know what good quality it is, and it's not available new. So people are buying vintage because that's what there is, and they are buying it by the score. I sold every piece I had at my storehouse sale recently. Let's go down this row of vases and baskets just to see if anything old might have come through but I don't see anything other than basic floral stuff this time around. Another wall of clocks, all newer ones. It's funny considering how many people don't use clocks anymore, how many new ones are still being made. Furniture does not look like anything exciting and old today. Yvonne said she has gotten some nice lamps and occasional pieces out of here. Here's something comically bad from Hobby Lobby. A place that I have to say I have had horrible service and not found anything I could use, even basic things. But maybe that's different where you live. I got a kick out of this because it says Nova SS. It's made in China. They don't realize that that is not a Nova SS. Let's see what this is. Is this a scarf? And what is it advertising? Oh, Lightning McQueen. This is from Cars. These are probably bed sheets. It won't be long until this generation is old enough that the stuff from Cars is going to be collectible, so that might be a bolo. And it pays to look up high because they have these high displays where they do put some fun things and interesting things. They're usually color matched, so you never know what will be in here. I thought maybe that blue vase was older, but it's not looking up close. Well, this one's actually the first thrift store we've been to today where I got skunked, but that is such a difference. In Boise, Idaho, I got skunked at all but the last thrift store that I went to, so this is a real pleasure. Yes. Awesome. Because well, you know, this was a limited campaign for Telefora or FTV. I can't remember. Oh, that was a single campaign. It wasn't something they did for a long time. That's really neat and to so know. This particular one, and they also make it with a lid. Ah, cool. Uh, Nordic wear. It Nordic wear, that's right. George is right. Some patterns of this go for a lot, but you have to check the pattern. Yes, and I don't know this well enough. I, I know I've sold the dinosaurs, but that's a different thing from an earlier era. Made in USA, castle bunt. So you make your bunt cake in a fabulous castle shape. That's kind of intriguing. We're going to have to look that one up. Okay, so these were made for princess parties and things like that. And the thing with the Nordic wear is that these do sell, and they sell for about $25 to $30, and it's only $6, but this would have to be sold in person because shipping on this is going to be $12 or $15, so you wouldn't necessarily buy this at this price for an online sale. Yeah, so this is signed by the cast, and this is the Denver premiere, so if any of these people went on to greater stardom or are known in this area, this would be a thing to buy. It's only $6.99, and I know that uh, Patrick at Trusty Huckster Mercantile is a theater guy, and he buys and sells this sort of thing pretty regularly. So these people in front of us are carrying a piece of sequoia ware. This looks like treasure crap, but this was by American Bisque. They did it about the same time, around 1970. 
and you can see the texturing. Notice that the brown color is very uniform compared to Treasure Craft, and it only says USA, but it's got that great label in the middle. And may I ask how much this is costing you? $4.99. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is an awesome set. Well, that great set of Sequoia Ware must have come out of a cart since we got here. So I'm looking to see what else is in carts. Hopefully we're not in customer carts. I think these are restocking carts. This is the time of day they like to put things out at a lot of thrift stores because it's less busy. So if you go right after work, a lot of times you'll see things that have just come out. Fiesta Cantina. But I don't see any other great pieces of Sequoia Ware or Treasure Craft looking stuff. So lucky for them they got it before I did. But that is a really neat piece and I'm excited to see people collecting that era of ceramics like I do. And when you guys see these glasses out in the marketplace with these floral painted little stems for champagne, that's because they originally came in these 1980s. Perrier Jouet sets and they are really cute and fun and you'll see the stemware by itself quite a lot now in thrift stores. All right well this is New Horizons thrift stores. This is one I have not ever been to before so let's come and see what is going on in here. So they help with uh, incarcerated women who are pregnant. That's my understanding so this is their third location here in this um, southern Colorado area. 50th anniversary for the Minnesota Vikings. This is something that would probably sell well to someone in Minnesota. Big bags of jewelry, yes. Oh, this is the one where when you spend $25 with your receipt, you get a coupon for $5 off your next visit that's good for a couple weeks. Oh, how nice. Every, just all the time. Oh, that's really great. Oh, good. Well, let's see if we can find something for you to use it on some sort of an old camera in there, a Bolsey, which is a brand you don't see so often. We'll have to take a look at that. Let's see, we've got the shoe company. We have a story shop full of books. This is a really nicely laid out thrift store. I mean, it feels like a new store in a way. Cheyenne Mountain Furnishings in the back, kids clothing area, menswear. So let's see in the old books section. I think I'm gonna spend a moment here just because I see older books right away. And when I see older books, then that gives me encouragement to think there might be something here. Dust jackets can matter. So I always look and see if there's anything that looks interesting with a dust jacket. And of course, when you see these size books, this is the size that hardbacks often were novels in the 1930s, 40s, 50s era. There is, he's just filming too, you guys. <laughs> We're filming each other filming. How self-referential. Some older speakers. The Allegro is a Zenith model. And Zenith was actually good stuff back in its day. That one is marked at $29.99. That might be well worth buying. Only problem is, of course, how do you test such things? Unless they've tested it, you have to just sort of take your chances and hope you get a good one. This lamp with the brands on it needs a really good western shade to make it. It's only $5.99 if you had a good shade or you wanted to do something fun like decoupage western scenes out of old magazine clippings, for example. Well, that would be a really fun lamp base to use for it. Tiny, tiny drum set. And one of these old Lady Sunbeam for your bouffant giant dome to put over your head. That is a hair dryer under there, believe it or not. $24.99. Plastic section. I see some Tupperware that's older down here, but we've got the faded lid on the orange bowl. Only 99 cents though. The prices are certainly very good here. And that's what I've heard. If you can find something here that it's going to be cheap, cheap, cheap. Well, somebody found a really great sand bottle. Oh my gosh, with Look the bison. This is wow. Saying. The best thrift store in town right now. Wow. Taking this. That is fantastic. Heavy. I'm going to take it up front for you is what I'm no, going to do because that thing weighs a ton. You know where to sell that. That's cool. Oh my gosh. I just want to check this out because the handles are very mid-century even though the rest of the form seems like something that might have been handmade. And it is only $24.99. The drawers work very nicely actually. And I do think this is a handmade piece, but it certainly has a good look. I would finish it a little differently. It could use some new finish anyway. 
the old bed frame here and is worn in the usual spot. Now you could tone that out, but that is a veneer. Now this is just really, really cool and very, very sweet. She picked this and she's letting me buy it and it is only... This is the best thrift store ever. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing, $2.99. This thing is probably 20 pounds of sand. Somebody did a ton of work on that. Lots of Budweiser Clydesdale mugs, and yes, some of those are collectible. So is this little Donald Duck jumper from my childhood. That is really cute. We're actually shopping someone else's cart. She got a deep Johnson Brothers uh, teapot there too. That's a great pattern. And I like these here too, actually. This is pretty, isn't it? It looks English. Yeah. Oh, it's Royal Dalton. Yeah. Well, I guess that is English. I haven't seen that pattern before. Very no, nice. No, I hadn't either. Well, I hope you had as much fun on that thrifting marathon as I did. It was really great to find old things and be able to save them and preserve them and give them new life. I'm looking forward to sending them on to collectors who will prize them and give them the place of do in their home. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Please check me out on the social links in the description below. Please do check out our membership packages. Please do subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos like and comment about this one and we'll see you again soon bye for now thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world please click the subscribe button below click the bell to be notified when new videos upload leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description this is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.